Hi to everyone at the Reading Zone Book Club. Thank you so much for inviting me to come and speak to you. I'm going to tell you about my brand new Izzy book, which is the 10th Izzy book in the season. Now, before I reveal the title and the glorious front cover to you, I wonder if you've heard of any of my other books before. I'll give you a hint. They're all about school and things to do with school, like teachers and school dinners and demon dinner ladies, such as The Spy Who Loves School Dinners. My head teacher is a vampire rat. There's a yeti in the playground. <gasps> An attack of the demon dinner ladies. Dun dun dun! So I think you can see where I get my inspiration from and I'm about to reveal the cover and the title of the latest book in the season, the 10th Izzy book. This is actually the first event I've done about the new book so thank you very much to everyone in the book club for having me on. Drum roll please! Dun dun dun! The broken leg of doom! Dun dun dun! Now, I'll tell you a little bit about this one. I have never broken my leg like Maisie does. Look at her massive cast. <gasps> that totally looks doomed, doesn't it? I've never broken my arm or my leg, and I hope I never do. Have any of you? I did think that I'd broken my fifth metatarsal once when I used to teach in America. Your fifth metatarsal is your pinky toe, by the way, so it's probably the smallest bone in your whole body, but it was only bruised. It was only bruised. But Maisie's gone and broken her actual leg, and she's done it because she was doing some extreme dancing with Jodie. Now, I used to do a lot of extreme dancing when I was at primary school. Basically, extreme dancing is when you make a routine with your friends, and it's got to be quite adventurous and quite silly, and then you have to do it as fast as you can for as long as you can. And poor, poor Maisie, she does it a little bit too fast, and she has a little has a little fall. Now, when she goes into hospital, she's a little bit scared because she doesn't like hospitals, and Maisie's a little bit scared too. Uh, Izzy's a little bit scared too because she doesn't like hospitals either. However, it starts to get worse once they get there. You see, because there's weird noises that keep happening in the night, and she's not sure what they are. Kind of scratching sounds. And then when she wakes up, there are actually messages written on her cast and she didn't write them and Jodie didn't write them and Izzy didn't write them and Zach didn't write them. And then somebody keeps on moving her humpback whale called Francisco, which is her favourite, favourite, favourite toy ever. And then eventually Francisco gets whale napped <gasps> and we don't know where he's gone and the gang have to find out. And I, I don't want to give it away, but they might see somebody completely wrapped in bandages. Dun, dun, dun. Now, I'm going to read you the very first chapter that's called Bad Things Always Happen in Threes. <gasps> Are you ready? Are your buttons comfy? Deep breath. This is scary stuff. I knew something bad was going to happen as soon as we arrived at the hospital. And I knew it because my mum says that bad things always happen in threes. And two bad things had already happened that day because Jody had made us all do extreme dancing, which is when you dance as fast as you can for as long as you can. And Maisie got dizzy and she fell down and broke her leg. And then we were in Jody's mum's car following the ambulance to the hospital. I reached into my bag to get my Twix because I was starving after all the dancing, but it was gone. <gasps> And that's when I remembered I'd already eaten it on my way to school. So anyway, when we got to hospital, I got a weird feeling because it was there was a really creepy statue in the entrance and the weird shape of Maisie's leg was freaking me out. And also there was a strange boy with a feather in his hat. But it was when we found out about the curse that we knew. Maisie and her leg were in deep trouble. Dun, dun, dun. And there's some gorgeous illustrations in here by the illustrator, the amazing Thomas Flint, oh, my friend Tom. Look how cool that is. I think this might actually be my favourite cover. Every time Tom does a cover, I say, that's my favourite cover. And then I write a special message to him in the back of the book that says, Tom, this is my favourite cover. And I've had to write it in this one again because it is. It's very, very cool. Uh, I really like this one. I'll give you a sneak peek. This is when Maisie sees her broken leg for the first time. Da -da -da! It's so cool. Uh, sometimes people ask me, how do you come up with the ideas for Izzy and her friends? Uh, how do you make sure the, the next book is going to be different from the one before? Well, we're on book 10 and I think they're all quite different. They all kind of take place either in school or on a school trip or have something to do about school. And that's probably because I've never really left school. I went to, pri went to nursery school and then I went to primary school and then I went to secondary school and then I went to university, which is basically just a big school. And then I became a teacher. So now I've got all the inside information. I get to see all the weird things teachers do and write about them all the secrets. 
secrets in the book. Um, I've got a really good memory. I've got a really bad memory, but I've got a really good memory of when I was at primary school. So when I'm thinking of ideas for the next book, I kind of sit down and I think, right, primary two, primary two, what happened? Right, okay. Primary six, primary six, what happened? And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh! Oh God, do you remember the time we went on that bus and it smelled really, really weird? And then before I know it, I think, well, I, we never found out why the bus smelled weird, but I could just make up a reason now. What types of things would we have thought back then? And then I think, oh, maybe something was on the bus with us. And before I know, it just gets out of control. Like maybe your teacher comes into school with a tiny scratch on her finger and you say, oh, miss, how did you get that? Because when she's handing your notebook, she sees a tiny scratch and she's a bit weird about it. She goes, oh, oh I don't know, I don't know. And you think, how would you not know? It's right there on your finger. You must you must know how you got a scratch on your finger. And then she goes back to her desk and you're supposed to be concentrating on your work. But all you can think about is, how did she get a scratch on her finger? Why would she want to hide it? And then you realise, oh, oh my goodness, she's hiding a werewolf in her basement. So you tell all your friends and you're all starting to panic and cry. And then, because you're scared that she might bring it to school. And then you realise, wait a minute, maybe she is the werewolf. <gasps> And your teacher's a werewolf and it's all panic until the school bell goes for lunch. You go to lunch, there's been more panic because they're serving smelly shepherd's pie. I just basically got all my ideas remembering all the wild and weird and wonderful stuff that happened when I was at primary school. And you should give it a go. You should think about something that happened one day when you were at school or at home that was only a small thing and then try to think about something and kind of an explanation that's wild that you could add on to that and then add on to that. And sometimes you can do it with friends. You can come up with an idea and then they can come up with an idea. And before you know it, you've got a wild and weird and wonderful uh, book. Thank you very much for listening to me talk about my new Izzy book, The Broken Leg of Doom. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for having me in and have a good fun in your book club reading the book and talking about it and making up your own stories thank you very much i've been pamela butcher and you've been wonderful bye